So are we doing the last song first? Good morning, church. He is risen. Hold on, I didn't hear that. He is risen. That's a little better. We're going to worship. Um, we're a little thin up here, so we need you guys to help sing. So on your feet if you can, and let's, uh, let's worship together. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high yeah cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high yeah lord i lift your name on high lord i love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high, yeah. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high On high Let's welcome Steve for the announcements. He is risen. Amen. Amen. I want to start by sharing a little bit of scripture with you this morning. And then uh, show you something pretty cool that I, uh, that I realized this morning that I didn't realize before. <clears throat> so I'm going to read from Matthew 28 starting in verse 2. 
And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord <clears throat> descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and its clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. So I learned something this morning. I never really thought about this thought. It says the angel rolled away the stone from the tomb. Now, I was thinking about this. We, we think Jesus, Jesus was already risen. Why did he need to roll away? He didn't need to roll that away so Jesus could come out. Jesus was already out. He rolled that away so that we could see what had been done. <clears throat> I never really picked that up before, but that is so beautiful. And that is also why he says, come and see. It's an invitation. So <clears throat> I'm saying Jesus is still telling us that today. Come. He doesn't say, he doesn't say, pick up your stuff, uh, bring, bring stuff. He just says, come, come and see. So no matter where you're at this morning, you're here. I'm thankful for your, that you're here and welcome. But whatever you have, whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, leave it. Amen. Leave it because Jesus is welcoming you. Amen. Amen. May you be encouraged. So for announcements, um, there is going to be an egg hunt for the children, 12 and under, right after church. And then, um, what was the other one? No youth group tonight. There you go. And children are dismissed at this time. And I would like to welcome the elders up for uh, our tithes and offerings. And I will pray with them. So will you pray? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord. Um, what an amazing day just to celebrate and re remember that you are risen, Lord. And um, that we can come to you, Lord, and your arms are open. So, Lord, this morning we just want to give our tithes and offering, offerings to you and ask you to bless them, Lord, and multiply them so that we can uh, build your kingdom, Lord. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's continue to worship this morning. <clears throat> say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow
Lord, now indeed I find Thy power in Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow He washed it white as snow He washed it white as snow
praise Him, my soul, with all your might. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. And every moment, all our days, God be praised. Oh, God, be praised. Praise God when face to face we see. The one who died to set us free the one who rose in victory praise now forever Christ our King praise the father praise the son praise the spirit now with us every moment all our days god be praised oh god be praised praise the father praise the son praise the spirit now with us every moment all our days god be praised oh god be praised praise god from whom all Blessings flow Praise Him all creatures here below Praise Him above ye heavenly host Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All together. Amen. That was beautiful, guys. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. should die for me amazing love I know it's true his 
my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. And I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? You, my King, should die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you in all I do to honor you cause you are my king you are my king Jesus you should die for me Amazing love I know it's true It's my joy to honor you Amazing love how can it be You my king should die for me Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you in all I do to honor you in all I do. Let me honor you. And Father God, as we uh, hear your word today, help us to not forget what you did for us, Lord. You died on that cross for every one of us in this room, Lord. But that wasn't the end, Lord. You conquered the grave and you rose again. Thank you so much for that. Lord. Be with Richard as he, Pastor Richard, as he gives us your word, Lord. And may it come straight from your heart to ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, we're going to go on a roller coaster today. Are you guys with me? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a wild one. Um, one thing that you guys know I love is participation. Okay? I don't like to be up here and just talk and have you guys quiet. I want you guys talking too, because this is one body, right? And as much as of an encouragement it is to hear the word through a pastor to you guys, it's an encouragement to your pastor to hear you guys speak in affirmation. Right. Amen. 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 Let it be. Amen. Amen. So when I say he is risen, he is risen you guys say he is risen indeed. And we're going to say that a couple times because he is risen. It's like, you know, this, this, it, who, how many of you are football freaks? Okay, a few of them out there. How dare you just destroy the, God's holy day with your football shenanigans? No, I, I'm in it too. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. You can boo me all you want. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, but, you know, like the Super Bowl is the big deal, okay? It's like when the Super Bowl comes on, everyone who's an NFL fan will watch it. The Super Bowl ain't got nothing on Easter. Amen? 
Because this is the greatest day that we get to celebrate because we get to celebrate the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which gives us the assurance, hope that we too will be raised from the dead. And I tell you, anytime someone uh, comes to life from the dead, we should probably pay attention. Amen. And that's what happened today. So we're going to focus on that a little bit. Um, I do get real excited because I love Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I, don't, I feel like I have no guilt. I have no shame when we celebrate this day. Good Friday, maybe we feel a little bit of the heaviness. But with, with the Resurrection Sunday, we get to celebrate Christ's victory in its fullness. Right? It's completed. It is done. Our God conquered sin, death, and the grave. Amen? Amen. So he is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm going to calm down a little bit. Church, Jesus laid dead in a tomb for three days. And Satan was dancing and celebrating that he had won. Can't you just see his little smirk, little Satan smirk? Ah, I crushed him. He's dead. But nope, not today, Satan, huh? You don't get no victory. In fact, Satan, you lost the privilege of victory when you rebelled against God. No, so on this day, Resurrection Sunday, Jesus smacked the devil in the face. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Church, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Church, the resurrection changed everything. On this day, we were truly set free. There is no more guilt. There is no more shame. There is no more condemnation. There is no more weight or burden of sin that we have to carry in our lives. God's work is complete. Everything that we face here on earth now is just temporary because we have heaven. Amen? Amen? The battle has been won. Amen? Amen? The resurrection of Jesus is proof of this. Amen? Amen. Whew. I love our God. But I'm going to calm down a little bit. We're going we're gonna to actually go back in time for this Resurrection Sunday. Because we want to celebrate the resurrection, but I have a great friend in Doug Childs who reminds me you can't have the resurrection without the death. And so although it's not Good Friday, we as a church didn't have Good Friday service, we're actually going to spend most of our time going over Good Friday because we really have to have a grasp of what Christ did on the cross so that we can better celebrate our Easter Resurrection Sunday. So... Before we get started, I'm going to ask Deidre. She's got a little word, and she wants to pray over the service. We're going to let her take the reins, and Richard's going to shake the dust off and get ready to preach his heart out. Thank you, take Pastor Fence. Okay, i got a few minutes. i got one question for you. I want you to think about it. Why did Jesus die for us? Why did he come here? What was his purpose? Real quick, anybody? Okay, there you go. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. Napoleon Bonaparte was one of the greatest generals that ever were. Everywhere he went, he defeated everybody. He went to this little town called Wellington, and they knew that that powerful army was going to destroy them. So what happened? They had a town crier. The, the, their internet was cut off at that point. So they had a town crier, and they all had to come to hear what the message was. And the message was, Wellington defeated. They all cried. They all started to go away sorrowful. They knew that this general was going to change their life forever. And as they were going, somebody called them. It was a dark day, and the clouds began to move away. And as they moved away, they saw a sign, and it said, Wellington defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. They won their victory. The same thing with Jesus Christ on the cross. They knew, just like Pastor Finch said, they knew they had him. They knew they had killed the Son of God. Satan knew who he was because he was in heaven with him. And the sign that day at Calvary said, Jesus defeated. And they walked away sorrowful. They walked away tearful. This man who said he was God was now dead on the cross. But three days later, when the clouds rolled away, the sign said, Jesus defeated Satan at Calvary. He won the victory. He gave us the right to go back to God without any interference. What is my scripture? The word of God says in 1 John, the third chapter, the eighth verse, it says that Satan sinned from the beginning. 
For this cause was the Son of Man made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever you're struggling with, it's been buried in a grave. Whatever you're going through right now, incarceration, poverty, sickness, disease, whatever it is, kids going awry, Jesus purchased your freedom and your victory at Calvary's cross. And he got up that third day. So many times I set my clock and I said, I'm going to get up in the morning at 6 o'clock. No. I don't get up by myself. He wakes us up every morning. But he got up. He said, I'm going to get up. I'm going to rise on the third day. So keep that thought in mind. You have victory over every single situation in your life because this cause was the son of man made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Finch. <laughs> Father God, talking about going to sleep and waking up. I went to sleep one morning and Pastor John was the pastor and I woke up and Pastor Finch was the pastor. Now the mantle and the anointing is on him. May he carry it with dignity. May he carry it with power. May he carry his mantle with compassion. May he deliver that word and love every soul that he ever comes in contact with, Lord God. And may he have the spirit and gift of long suffering to put up with people like me. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the word that's coming forth. I thank you that Diane is here. I thank you, oh God, for your blessing on Ferndale Alliance Church today to hear from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deidre. She wouldn't let me say no. I didn't want to say no. That's beautiful. What a word. Isn't that it, though? We're free. We have it. And, and too often, we, we sit here and we say, oh, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work this out, and then I'll get right with you. And Jesus says, no. No, I've got my mop, and I've got my bucket. Let me work it out with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. So like I mentioned, I want to do a little bit of a walkthrough. And so um, we're going to go through the chapters of Matthew 26 and 27. And I'm just going to summarize it. And, and I want to take you on a journey uh, of what the day of Jesus' crucifixion looked like. We're going to kind of go through this journey, go through it together, and really get our hearts and our minds set on what he went through. So that way we can better understand the resurrection. So the morning of Good Friday after the disciples had fled, okay, they ran away from Jesus uh, the night before. Jesus was brought before the Sanhedrin. Now, if you don't know who the Sanhedrin were, these were some like high and mighty uh, priests. They were the, the elders of the Jewish court. They were the ones that were kind of the bosses of the time. And, and they, they put Jesus out in front of this group in this court, and they had a hearing. And the hearing was a complete joke. It was manipulation. It was false accusations. They were bringing false evidence against Jesus. And, and, and they came and they came, more accusation after another. And what did Jesus do? Uh, he remained silent. He didn't puff his chest up. He didn't get all rambunctious and rowdy. No, he remained silent. And eventually one of the high priests, they stood up and they demanded that Jesus answer this one question, which was really what this was all about. They asked, are you the Messiah, the son of God? So Jesus is in this court, and this is how he replies. He says, you have said so, but I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, sometimes I just wish Jesus would have said yes. You know, <laughs> are, you, are you the Messiah, the Son of Man, or Son of God? Yes. Well, Jesus doesn't quite work that way, right? Which I love, because he makes us use this and this and this. But, but what, was, what was taken by the Sanhedrin, but what they understood was that Jesus was just saying yes. In fact, the high priest tore his clothes and shouted blasphemy. He is now worthy of death. He is claiming to be the son of God. And so what did they do to our Savior? They spat in his face. They struck him with their fists. They slapped him saying, prophesy to us, Messiah, who's the one that just hit you? Use your heavenly superpowers to, to prove to us. And what did Jesus do? He took it. Nothing. So just right off the beginning, Jesus was ditched by his friends, wrongfully captured, and then he had to listen to a bunch of self-righteous people bring false accusation against him. And he was then found guilty of calling himself the Messiah, which was the one thing that he truly was. He spoke truth, and he was found guilty and worthy of death because of that. I think it's disgusting that they spit on his face. That's our Savior. And they spit. Now, this was pre-COVID, right? So maybe we look at it a little different, but just nasty. They spit on him. They slapped him. They mocked him. I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I'd ever want to start my morning that way. 
That's the early hours of Good Friday. And while this is going on, there's this great guy named Peter. You know, Jesus' guy, his homie. You know, one of the inner three of Jesus' circle. And what does Peter do on this wonderful morning where his best friend, his Savior, is getting slapped around? He denies him. Not just once, not just twice, three times. He disowns Jesus on three separate occasions. <laughs> Thanks, best friend. Thanks for ditching me last night. Denying me not just once, but three times. No. When I needed you the most, Peter, you weren't there. And then in this journey, uh, the Sanhedrin bring uh, Jesus before Pilate, who, if you don't know, he was a Roman governor, and he was the one that really dictated uh, who was going to be crucified or not. He was in charge of the Roman guard. They were the ones that oriented this whole thing of crucifixion and governance. And in this conversation, Jesus does reiterate again that he is indeed the Messiah. And the council, the Sanhedrin, they brought all their charges before Pilate. They said, this guy is worthy of death. He's, he's blaspheming. He's claiming to be God. He is not. And, and they're making accusation again now in the Roman court. And what does Jesus continue to do? Remain silent. I don't know about y'all, but good luck getting me to keep quiet when people are making false accusations against me. I'm a stubborn, arrogant man that I have to crush that side of me every day. And if you start slandering me, it's going to be a, it's going to be a problem. How many can relate? And what does Jesus do? He has every right to. It would be just for him to stand up for himself, and he doesn't. And so then, Pilate's kind of stuck in a pickle because he doesn't really think Jesus should be crucified, but he's got the crowd is all ramped up, and they really want to see him dead. And so uh, Pilate knew that every year uh, during a holy day, he could, uh, they, they could let one prisoner go. So they could, they could bring two before them, and they'll let one go. And even though they want death, they can relieve them of it. And it's kind of a way for Pilate to wash his hands of this. Like, well, I'm not going to make this decision. I'm going to let you make the decision. Right? So I'm going to give you the opportunity to let Jesus go. And so, so, so he's able to release one prisoner during the Passover celebration. And so he gave the crowd an interesting choice between Jesus and a guy named Barabbas. Now, Barabbas is an interesting character. He kind of interrupts the whole narrative here. And we don't know much about him, but we know this about him. What do we know? We know that he is a murderer, uh, a leader of an insurrection. He's a rebel. He is not a good man. He's a thug. And so Pilate stands on this stage with Jesus over here and Barabbas over here. The son of the living God and a thug and a rebel. All right, crowd, who do you want? Who's it going to be? Jesus or this rightful prisoner? A man who should be on death row. A rebel against Rome. A murderer. A bad man, a thug, a crook. We should probably not release this guy, right? Giving all the evidence. Because this guy deserves what? Death. He deserves the chains. He deserves crucifixion. So do you want to let this guy go or Jesus, the one who came and healed you, who delivered you, who set you free, who opened blind eyes and deaf ears, who helped the lame walk, who elevated the status of women in a culture that continued to smear them? Who do you want? What has Jesus done but everything right? And what has Barabbas done but everything wrong? So crowd, who do you want? They chose Barabbas. So the Roman soldiers, they come up, put the key in. They unlock, un unlock Barabbas. They set him free from his chains and his shackles. And I can just see it, him walking down off this platform, going to all his thug friends, thinking, yeah, they love me. These are my people. They set me free. They're about what I'm about. They want to overthrow this. He probably had very little regard for who Jesus was, even though Jesus literally just allowed him to walk free. You think Barabbas turned to Jesus and said, thank you. I appreciate what you did. No. No. And God knew that. God knew Barabbas wouldn't thank him. 
for being set free. See, Barabbas thinks that the crowd set him free because they voted for him. No, God set him free because God had a plan that involved Jesus going to the cross. I heard it said this way, and it, it just crushes me, but it's so beautiful. Jesus accepted it on that platform because Jesus knew that the Father would have to treat Jesus like Barabbas so that he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father would have to treat Jesus like Barabbas so that he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. Sometimes I think maybe we're Barabbas. I'm not going to soak on that too much. So this court hearing, shenanigans goes on. They say Jesus deserves crucifixion on the cross. So after the crowd picked Barabbas, the guards took Jesus away. They stripped him down. They twisted together a crown of thorns. They mocked him. They beat him. They shouted, Hail, it's King of the Jews, in mocking fashion. Again, they spat on him. They struck him on the head. They whipped him over and over again. It says that they beat him right to the edge of death. The Romans were proficient in this. They knew how many lashings an individual could take. And they pushed him to that breaking point. And then they brought Jesus out into the streets after beating him to near death, they sent him on his way to Golgotha with a cross to carry. But along the way, the soldiers actually made a man named Simon carry the cross because Jesus was beaten so badly that he couldn't physically carry the cross. And then when they got to the place of the skull, Jesus was given the cross back. But he still couldn't carry the weight of it. They had to nail him to it. His hands, his feet. While he's hanging there, they gambled for his clothing. They mocked him by placing a sign above his head. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. They shouted, if you are the Son of Man, sorry, the Son of God, come down from that cross. If you are the Messiah, the Holy One, if you have all the power, just lift yourself off. Heal your wounds. You healed other people. Why don't you heal yourself? At about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? hard to realize the weight of the cross. See, we think the weight of the cross is the physical, brutal, bloody pain. No. Because sin separates you from God, when your sin got placed on Jesus, there was a separation from the Father, a trinity. It's a concept we can't even fathom all the way. But for a moment in time, Jesus was no longer connected to his father. That's the weight. That is heavy. There are people here that I know are tough enough and righteous enough in some sense that they would actually bear the physical pain of the cross to save somebody. I believe there are people here that would do that, that would sacrifice their life in a horrendous way to save one or thousands or others. I couldn't. I'm a weenie. <laughs> but Jesus did so much more than that. So much more. So at about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He cried out a second time, and it says he gave up his spirit. And something really profound happened. It says that the temple curtain, which was the place where you would commune with God, the holy place, there was a, there was a curtain there that separated the presence of God from the rest of the world. That way, if you were in the presence, you wouldn't die. Well, the, the, the curtain, curtain was, was tore. It was closed. It was from top to bottom, very unique. And it signifies something, that God's presence is no longer confined into a temple. But God's presence is now given to us through the Holy Spirit and dwelling. And so the temple curtain was torn into two. The ground shook, literally shook. It was, there was darkness, and then the guards who were guarding Jesus were afraid, and they testified. Surely Jesus was the Son of God. 
the Roman guards who were just mocking this man experienced something so profound that they knew they had just messed up. That was Jesus. Sit in that for a moment. That's what our Savior did on Good Friday. Wow. That afternoon, a man named Joseph asked Pilate for Jesus' body, and he wrapped him in clean linen cloth, and Jesus was placed in a tomb where he would lay, but not stay. I like little rhymes like that. He would lay, but not stay. Church, we can't deny that the events of Friday are heavy. They are heavy. They should be heavy. We should feel that. We should recognize all that our Savior did for us on that day. They're very heavy. And my heart hurts when I walk through these events, but we need to do it. We have to. We have to recognize. It's with our knowledge of these events that we really start to realize what Jesus did. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says this. It says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though some might perhaps be willing to, to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Jesus died for Barabbas. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me and all of our filth and all of our sin. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't die for people that were pretty good. He died for <laughs> the worst of us. And I'll put myself in that category. Jesus died for us on that cross. He paid the price for our sins to its fullest extent, even though we showed him no love. I like to think of this a little bit. Go on a little journey with me. What if Jesus dropped the cross? What if he said, I've had enough. You've mocked me. You don't love me. You spit on me. You whip me. You beat me. You choose Barabbas, the murderer, over me. And I've done nothing but good for you. And this is how you repay me. By sending me to the cross. What if Jesus said I had enough? We can't imagine Jesus doing this. Could you imagine Jesus saying, you guys aren't worth it? Yet every one of us have felt like that and we have treated one another like that. We can thank God that Jesus chose the cross and did not leave it up to us to work out our own salvation because you wouldn't be able to do it. We never could. We needed the spotless lamb of God to take our sins. We needed the king of kings and the Lord of lords to step down from heaven to enter into the flesh of a man, to be our servant, to live a perfect life and to suffer on our behalf. But for what purpose? What was the outcome of the cross? What were the results of his work? We hear heaven a lot. But I want to read another beautiful verse from Romans. Romans 5, this is 8 through 10. It says, Since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Jesus Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. So yes, we will be saved. This is it. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. See, church, we often realize that that part of our benefit from Christ is heaven. And we kind of get excited about that. and, And it should be something we get excited about. But too often we think that's just it. I get heaven... So I'm just going to live through this yuck of a life. It's going to be a little tough, but I know on the end of, in, end of this journey, when I die, I get to go be with Jesus and I get to hug him for a million years. Like we get stuck there, which is a good place to be, but we can't just only be there. See, what we realize, what we find out in Romans here is that actually God restored right relationship through the son. 
Meaning, again, the curtain has been torn. You now, even in your sin, get to actually have a personal relationship with Jesus and God our Father. That is huge. You realize in the Old Testament what you had to do just to talk to God. It was, it was burdensome. It was, it was impossible. There was no sacrifice because blood, blood covers over sin. But because of Jesus' blood, perfect blood, the spotless lamb, we have been completely set free, and it has restored rightness in relationship with God. You get to talk to your father who knows you and loves you deeper than you could ever comprehend. That is a big benefit of the cross. Amen. Yes, we get heaven, but his death restored what Adam lost when Adam and Eve ate the fruit. It says sin entered through one man and Adam, but sin leaves through one man, which is Christ. So we have friendship with God. We have a right relationship. We get to be with our Heavenly Father here on this side of heaven and on that side of heaven. Even though we were the ones that spat in His face, that whipped Him, that wrongly persecuted Him. We were the ones that hung Him on that cross. <clears throat> and yet He still willingly accepted it with love in His heart so that we can know the love of our Father. It's called Good Friday because Jesus died and we were forgiven. Amen. That's good news, church. Amen. Amen. So what was bad for Jesus was not just good, but amazing for humanity. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God. Jesus lived a perfect life. That'd be hard, especially, with, especially in those times. He performed many miracles, and he died for our sins. This is good news. Amen, church? Amen. So <clears throat> what can we do with that? Well, for one, we can decide that we're done living for ourselves. That's the easy one. We can return and run back to our Father. We can pursue a relationship, the relationship that Jesus died for. We can chase after it, get on our knees. We can pray. We can read his word, the greatest love book ever written. We can get to know our Father. We can give our life to him. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, man, today's a good day. Today's a good day to start. Yesterday was a better day, but today's still good. Amen? Give your life to him. See, we get stuck on Good Friday, and we feel the weight of it. But I'm so thankful the story doesn't end there. The story doesn't end that Jesus died for our sins, that he paid the price, and that now we have a relationship with God. Because just imagine the guilt and the shame and the condemnation that we would have to carry if Jesus died and stayed dead. Have you ever thought of that? Imagine if Jesus stayed dead. You would, every time you'd sin, you would be putting your head down, feeling horrible. I messed up again. This is why Jesus had to die. This is it. I, I couldn't stop touching that bottle. I couldn't stay off the web browser. This is it. And he's dead, and he stayed dead. Imagine if that was the case. The guilt and the shame we would carry every single day, knowing that our actions separated God and his son forever. Have you thought about that, church? But the story doesn't end there. And amen, huh? Because Jesus laid in that tomb for three days, and on the third day, he was risen. Church, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Amen. Church, the resurrection of Jesus is the key to our faith. If Jesus didn't rise, then our Christianity falls apart. Completely falls apart. Many apologists say that if you can disprove the resurrection of Jesus, then you win. But church, you can't disprove it. How many of you have heard of a guy named Lee Strobel? He's a great apologist. He was an atheist, real smart guy. He went out to disprove Christianity. And in his journey of trying to disprove, he realized if I can just prove that Jesus never rose from the dead, the whole thing falls apart. Because if Jesus never rose, then he could not have been God. Because only God could rise from the dead. And so he went on this journey... 
And he summarized his findings in uh, what he calls the four E's. And let's just say that he didn't stay an atheist. The four E's are this, the execution of Jesus. Jesus was truly dead after his crucifixion. He wasn't just passed out. He wasn't just drugged up to make it look like he was dead. No, actually there's peer-reviewed secular journals of the American Medical Association said that clearly, based on the medical and historical evidence, the Romans knew how to kill people. And Jesus was dead even before they shoved the spear through his side. You can't fake it. Jesus was dead on that cross. The second E is the early accounts of Jesus' resurrection. The resurrection is not a legend. A lot of times people will say, well, you know, these, the, the, the gospel accounts and these letters were written so far after Jesus' death. No, no, no. No, no, no. It is not make-believe. It's not mythology. The earliest Christian creed actually proclaims that Christ's resurrection is dated within a few months of the event, meaning that we have records within a few months of Jesus' resurrection claiming that he rose. Now, it would be really easy to disprove that in the moment, right? Oh, you know, if we're like, say we're 50 years past the resurrection, then we start saying, oh, Jesus, he rose from the dead. Like, no, he didn't. There's no way he could prove that. But you write within a couple months, you have eyewitness accounts. It says there's over 500 people that Jesus was, was shown to that, that spoke truth on this. Also, not to mention his disciples were willing to die for this truth. <laughs> kind of a big one there, right? There's so much history on the account of Jesus' resurrection that makes it proof to not be a legend. The fourth E is the empty tomb. I love what Steve said. The tomb, the door was rolled away, not so Jesus could get out so that we could look in. Gosh, I never heard that. That was good, Steve. It's good. Because you know what? We needed to see the tomb was empty. If the tomb stayed sealed, we never would like, oh, no, look, he could still be in there. We don't know. But we got to look in. The empty tomb. Opponents admit that the, the tomb was empty. And, you know, oftentimes there's a lot of excuses as to why the tomb was empty. Um, but even those that don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, they still agree that the tomb was empty, and they're trying to make excuses for why it was empty. Oh, the disciples stole the body. That was the big one. The disciples must have come in and stole the body. No, the tomb was empty because Jesus walked out of it. Amen? Amen? The fourth E is eyewitnesses. Ancient sources inside and outside of the New Testament corroborate that the, uh, the conviction of the disciples and others that they encountered the resurrection, that they encountered the resur resurrected Jesus. In terms of ancient liter literature, there is an avalanche of historic data that Jesus appeared to many people after he rose. I also love, uh, Pastor John would always say this one, the first people that he went to were ladies. Amen. That would, If you were going to make this up, you wouldn't say that, that the women witnessed it first, okay? And, and, and that's not right. But the historical times are there. A woman's uh, uh, opinion or her voice or uh, her worth in, in their testimony, thank you, in court were, were much lower than a man's and oftentimes just ignored. If you were going to make this up, you want to let women be the first one to give account that Jesus was there. Church, you can't disprove the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is fact. And because of this, we can have confidence that we will have life beyond this earth, early one. If you ever want to read it, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's known as the resurrection chapter. It can be a little complex to go through, but it is a beautiful chapter. And I would hope that during this Easter season, you would take a time and read it, and read it slowly. Read it really slowly. But one of my favorite verses in there is 21 and 22. It says this, it says, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam, all will die, so in Christ, all will be made alive. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, we can have full assurance that we too will be raised. That is our Easter message. God is good. And all the time. You are a new creation, church. He is risen. 
I'm going to pray while the worship team come up, and then we will do our Easter egg hunt. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this Sunday, Lord. I thank you that, that you, you, you not only died on the cross, Father, and you took on the weight of our sin, Lord, but I am so thankful that I don't have to live in guilt and shame anymore because you rose on the third day. Lord, I get to celebrate that you conquered sin, death, and the grave, Lord. Lord, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that through your Holy Spirit, you've given me the power, given all of us the power to conquer our sin, Lord, that we don't have to continue to wrestle. We can just leave it at your feet, and you will help work it, work it out in our souls, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for your Son and his glory, Lord, and I pray that, that we will be able to go out from this Sunday and remind those that are close to us, that are near to us, Lord, that you are real. God, let evangelism, let revival just well up in, in the United States of America and the world right now, Lord. Lord, there is a need for you. There is a need for you in our homes, in our world, Lord. So let this church and all the churches around here be the method that you use to save this world. We thank you for the work of the cross and your son. In Jesus' name, we all prayed and said together, amen. The head that once was crowned with thorns Is crowned with glory now The Savior now to wash our feet Now at His feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame Now robed in majesty The radiance of perfect love Now shines for all to see Your name, your name his victory and all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name his victory and all praise will rise to christ our king Fear that held us now gives way To Him who is our peace His final breath upon the cross Is now alive in me Your name, your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name, His victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Yeah. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, he's resurrecting me.
tomb where soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our god is robbed the grave our god is robbed the grave your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, he's resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King, He's resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, He's resurrecting me. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Go be blessed. Go tell someone about Jesus, okay? Time is short. We don't know when the end's coming, but get after it. If you've got kids, or if you are a kid, maybe even at heart, and you want to do an Easter egg hunt, we've got two sections over there. If you can just start gathering them kind of on the, uh, pave, or the, the gravel area, we're going to say go for them to go. The left side is for all kids that are four and under. The right side is for those four and whoever, you know, 60-year-old Gary, you know, whatever. Um, you're dismissed. Love you guys. Happy Easter.